St. Lucia historically has been a, a, a hub for charcoal production. In fact, it used to be um, the charcoal storage point for the colonial, for colonial British West Indies. Um, as, as modern people, as, as young people, we are always looking for ways of um, improving and acquiring innovative and new technology. Um, we have um, tried to find a way to modernize the whole charcoal production system. So one that is less um, degrading of the environment. So we're looking at sustainability from the production end, as well as one that will, will um, make use of the many derivatives you could have from charcoal, from charcoal production. So we're not looking at just the charcoal for cooking, but we're also looking at what can be done with the smoke. What can be done with um, what is usually left in the soil if you use uh, an, an oven, um, oven? So here, we actually did some good research. We found um, some new cutting, cutting edge um, technology in, for the production of charcoal. We acquired the patent for that technology and we have implemented it. We have implemented the design and we are producing charcoal in a new, more sustainable, and a, a more um, efficient manner. And in came Jeff. Why did we go to the Jeff? After having um, acquired the patent and uh, designing a system that would be able to encourage and develop new charcoal, fresh charcoal, clean charcoal, we needed a source of funding and we wanted to match ourselves to a funding agency that would meet some of our goals in terms of environmental sustainability, environmental protection, and the Jeff stepped in. With the Jeff resources, we were able to expand our production and also look at other ways and means in which we can improve our production cycle. What we have been able to do here today with this charcoal production is to almost make charcoal white and to move charcoal from an industry which has been traditionally considered to be dirty and unclean and unsafe for the environment into the realm of the green economy. We have designed a system whereby with the, the, the resources um, support from Jeff to create a green economic system whereby we are able to start with a tree that has already been grown, create charcoal and 15 other products as well as going back and planting trees into the soil. So at the end of the day we have been closing the loop creating one cycle and 15 products whereby we can get all of those produce in. Along the way, what it is that we've been able to do is that we've been able to include a lot of youth into the process and to ensure that many of those youth get the opportunity to learn some new technology, new processes, and how new things work. One of our key persons here uh, managing the system is Vianney. Vianney is our technician who actually operates the kilns. And what you'll do is explain how the kilns work and how we are able to produce charcoal utilizing a kiln. Vianney? Well, basically it's more simpler than your normal charcoal production. You have a built-in kind of oven-like kiln where you put in your wood, you have uh, your chimneys, you have your accelerators. Uh, so you pack your wood in your kiln about about a thousand kilograms of wood, you put it in, uh, you light the chimney at the front, the firebox, sorry, and in two, three days, let's just say you have charcoal already. And one of the things that you have to recognize with this process is that the wetness of the wood will determine the length of time that you take to burn. So like Vianney said, it takes an average of two to three days. Three days would mean that you are very wet wood. With drier wood, this process can take as little as 48 hours to produce a thousand kilograms of charcoal. Not only so, when we do produce charcoal, not only do we produce lump charcoal, but we are also able to produce um, charcoal chips, biochar, as well as activated charcoal from this process. The design of the kiln also allows us to have the smoke, and from the smoke we also are able to produce five other products that we can get from harvesting the smoke. Harvesting the smoke allows us to reduce the impact on the environment and ensure that we participate in the green economy. Um, so where do we source our materials? Um, since charcoal is a, a driver of degradation and a, a, a serious um, driver of deforestation, we, we are trying to not be party to that. 
So we source our materials in a, 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 a number of ways. The first one being the forestry department have um, created what they call charcoal lots in the late 70s, early, early, um, early 80s. So we purchase materials from there. We also purchase materials from the um, plantations when they do filling or overhanging and so on. We source materials from what they call, you could call nuisance trees that may be along some of the, 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 the secondary roads and so on and nuisance trees that are in people's yards. So we kind of give an arborist service to the, to the community. So we go in, we get the trees for either for free or at a very low price and the people benefit from the, these um, nuisance trees being um, removed. We also get trees when people do <coughs> clearing of locks. Um, we could come in and do some of this, the, uh, other work and get the materials. And there are also areas, for example, where we have, um, where we are able to source materials on land that we manage. Um, who benefits from this? this? This project has a number of beneficiaries. You have, one, the acquisition of, um, because we have the acquisition of new technology, you find the country has benefited because we could say, boy, in the Caribbean, St. Lucia, is the only English-speaking Caribbean nation where charcoal is being produced in a, modern, in a modern manner. You could also say that a number of youth, at least 8 to 10 youth, have gotten direct um, employment opportunities as well as training opportunities to, um, during the, 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 the life of the project and before that even. You also have people from the community the, the people who own the people who own the nuisance trees, they are actually getting the arborist service at a very reduced price, or in some cases for free, as well as the landowners, the farmers, whom we do that work where we actually come in and cut trees that they want to remove. So you could say that there are benefits directly from the from the project, as well as the fringe benefits, right? Good. Partnerships. We have been able to partner with a number of organizations and institutions for us to get this project off the ground. One of our key partners has been AICA, the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, who has provided quite a bit of support for us in terms of um, managing the, the resources, engaging public participation within the project, and overall technical support. Another one of our key partners has been the Department of Forestry. Department of Forestry having recognized the benefits to using our approach to charcoal production has assisted us in ensuring that we get access to the charcoal plots, access to other areas within the forest in the overall forest management plan. They have recognized that utilizing this charcoal technology would help persons not only to help um, improve the, the conditions of the environment and how charcoal is produced, but also to ensure that there is increased production and a better quality of production. As Carl said earlier, the use of um, this technology not only allows for more efficiency, but different types of wood that may have been softer wood, because of the temperatures that we are able to create the charcoal at, allows that softer wood to produce a better quality of charcoal as well. So who are our markets? Who do we target? Really and truly, we target a number of persons. We target persons who want to utilize charcoal for cooking or traditional cooking purposes, but also we have um, looked at the medicinal market as well as the market for water filtration. The use of charcoal for water filtration is actually a big market that we are looking to target as that is a way that we could utilize a lot of the smaller particles of charcoal and ensure a better quality of water for persons in the rural community. We have begun discussions with Wasco in that regard. We are also looking at the, the future. What is it that we will be able to do? In the future, we are hoping that we could expand and share this technology, not only with persons within St. Lucia, but also within the Caribbean. We see the Caribbean and the OECS in particular as one space. And we believe that it is necessary for young persons to be able to participate in this clean technology so that we can achieve the goals of having a sustainable society.